Hello and welcome to the 46th episode of The Real List Podcast, a podcast about our real list. I'm your host, Ellis. And I'm your host, Gloria, and today's selection is from me. This is Spirited Away, a Studio Ghibli film. Uh, can I see the mouse, please? You, you may see the mouse. That's right. Please, you can scroll up. This was also like one of the first movies we ever watched that was on the list. I it think was so, one of the was. very first that was on that was written down. Yeah, this is the second movie on the list next to Down Periscope. <laughs> yep. Down oh. Periscope, the dumb joke <laughs> that started this entire thing. We haven't made an episode on Down Periscope. No, we, we haven't. We need to do that because I'm I don't want to put it in this episode the explanation of why we have a movie list in the first place. But it was a one-liner with no explanation that I dropped on, like, the first day that we hung out. No, uh, I think it was after I moved in. I think it was, we made this movie no, list. No, there was no way it was after you moved in. That was so much later. Was it? Yeah, it was. It Are was you like, sure? It was immediate. Like, I immediately made that. All right, this is not a conversation for this episode. <laughs> uh, this is Spirited Away. Tell us about uh, it. This is a Miyazaki film. Uh, directed, Ghibli film. Directed and written by Miyazaki. Uh, produced by Toshio Suzuki. Uh, starring a whole bunch of actors. <laughs> I'm not going to try and... <laughs> You're I, not going to butcher I, any I of these names. I am not going to try names. and butcher anybody's name. We're not going to do that today. Uh, this film came out in 2001. It is... Basically, what I can give you is it's... Um, a girl and her family are moving to a new town, and the family gets off track, and they go into this tunnel that leads them to a spirit realm, and I guess the parents uh, feed into their greed and gluttony, and they become pigs yep. from eating food from the land. Or maybe they were pigs the whole time. Mm -hmm. But the girl, Chihiro, the, the main character of the movie, basically, uh, stumbles upon the bathhouse... Yeah. where she um, basically ends up working and she goes through all these trials and faces discrimination and all these tasks at hand that she is given to, like she has to um, deal with um, the stink spirit that's actually not a stink spirit <laughs> she has to deal with no face she has to deal with Yubaba she has to deal with Haku she has to deal with everybody giving her grief because she is a human and by the end of the movie, she becomes really the hero of the movie. Yeah, and she also grows up quite a lot. Yeah, she um, does. She grows up quite a lot. She learns she learns a lot about herself while she's in the spirit realm. I will say that the sequence with the stink spirit, or the river spirit, mm -hmm. is probably my favorite sequence <laughs> in the whole film. I like uh, I, I When I first saw this film, I thought Yubaba was talking about No Face when she was like, oh, something's on its way. Yeah, well, she gives multiple hints about she knows things are amiss. Like, when she says there's an intruder, I think she's thinking about <sighs> no face. Mm. And then she says something's on its way, and it's the, the river spirit. Um, but part of the reason I love that sequence is because of the animation. And you could gush about how beautiful this movie is. And I want to say that we did originally watch this movie... Well, I watched, like, half of it, because you were watching it, and I stumbled into the room, and, uh... No, we watched it... To, we started watching it together because you got me the box set. We started watching it the first time together, and I fell asleep. Are you sure? Because I remember seeing the second half of it the first time I saw it. And I think it was something that you were watching... Like, you were watching it... Before I got you the box set, or maybe it was after I got you the box set, but you were watching it alone, and I came in the room and saw the second half. Because I came in at the scene where, um, what's Yubaba's sister's name? Zaniba. Where Zaniba turns the baby and the... Bo? The Bo baby's name is Bo. Yeah. They, it turns the baby and the crow into a, a mouse and a fly or whatever they I are. I think it's a bird. It, it's, a, it's a little thingy. Uh, it looks like a tiny Daffy Duck, uh, if I'm going to be completely <laughs> honest. But the... Yeah, I came in at that scene and I was so mightily confused for the rest <laughs> of the movie. And 
That's, that was the first time I saw this movie. If, if you're not like if if you if you're watching this movie from the middle of the movie, you're going to be very confused because you're not going to know what's going on. You have to watch this movie start to finish, because if you don't watch the movie start to finish, you're going to have no idea what's going on. To be completely frank, you can watch this movie from the beginning and still be mightily confused. Uh, you sort of have to take things as they come. This movie is a ride, and I really appreciate it for that because. I don't think I fully appreciated this movie the second time I watched it, which was the first time I watched it all the way through, um, which was the first time I watched it with you and when you fell asleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I this was is tired. And yeah, it's okay. Uh, Shit happens. Listen, I'm just glad we're watching the, these movies on a couch because if we watched them in a car, you wouldn't be able to make it through any of them. Uh, Not Gloria's, true. Gloria is giving a very sheepish smile, and that is. Not true. That's uh, a lie. Um, <laughs> the, the test determined that that was a lie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, this movie is a ride, and I wanted to say, because we can we can pull apart all our all of our favorite parts. I want to give this movie serious props because, and this is me jumping the gun on it because I was going to talk about this at the star ratings. Since we watched this movie together mm -hmm. the first time. We have watched a lot of movies. We have watched probably 50 movies at a minimum, including the ones that, uh, you know, including all the rest of this show and some of the movies that came before that, like City of Ember, Grand Budapest Hotel, some of the stuff that we've marked off the list but haven't made episodes about. 1917. Oh, we didn't make an episode on that? Oh. That was before the podcast. That was, you're right. Um... We did have an extended conversation about the star ratings after that, which might be why I'm thinking of it as uh, something we made, a, we made an episode on. I, re I recognize that we did not, mm. but we had a we had a conversation about that because I remember we had we watched that movie, and like I wasn't feeling good that day, and then we just had like a conversation about the movie after it, which was one of the first times we had a genuine sit down conversation. It was that and Dives Out that made. I feel like a, we also we also got into an argument out after watching 1917. So let's yeah, but that had nothing to do with the movie. Yeah, is what no. I'm saying. Uh, but point is, I was trying to avoid that subject by saying that I was feeling bad. <laughs> but if you just want to put like one of the weakest, like historically weakest points of our relationship on blast on the middle of this show, we can do that <laughs> instead. Okay. I love you. I love you too. That was a long time ago. I, I, we're, that's done. We're done with that. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what? Okay. Anyway, no, I wanted to finish my thought. Okay, finish your thought. We've watched a lot of bad movies since we watched this movie previously, is what I was trying to get at. Uh, They're not all we, that bad. No, 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 no. But we have watched a lot of worse movies. We have watched a good number of bad movies, genuinely bad movies. We, we watched a lot of movies that are distinctively worse than this film mm -hmm. this is i mean it goes without saying this movie made 13 30 almost 400 million uh, i was struggling to say 300 but almost 400 million at the box office on a budget of less than 20 mil that is a return on investment of uh let's see quick maths that's like 20 times your investment this movie like like I, I, what's the oldest Miyazaki film? Is that My Neighbor Totoro? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, because let's see, we need movies directed by Miyazaki. Um, Castle in the oh oh yeah, uh, Castle in the Sky was nineteen eighty six. My Neighbor Totoro was nineteen eighty eight. Castle which... in the Sky, I have not seen. I think we have it. I think it's on the thing. yeah. It's in the box set. Uh, All his movies are in the box set. But he has some movies before founding. Studio, Studio Ghibli, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know if we'll ever watch this, but he was uh, ever watched these, but he worked as an animator as far back as like he's eighty one years old. Yeah, in the seventies he was working. In the sixties he was working as an animator. So he's got he's got a repertoire. You might say it'll be a. How old did you say he was? Eighty. He's eighty one years old. Eighty one. It will be a sad day when we lose. Hayao Miyazaki. Um, I think I'd, I'd be very, I will be very sad. Yeah. But this is a, such a standout movie, even among mm -hmm. great movies. Like, you, like, before, like, 
there was a point in my childhood where, or a point in my life where I forgot a lot of like my childhood memories and I started like, slowly gaining them back <laughs> because I was scrolling through Facebook at one point and I stumbled upon a Studio Ghibli fan page and it was all of the backgrounds and the scenery from the movies. Like all the movies? All the movies. And Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> and That's desktop the, background fodder is what that is. And um the scene with the train, how they're going by all the little the little places, like mm-hmm. the, the little plots of land. The house, the house with the tree mm-hmm. was one of them and I was like, Oh, I remember from seeing that on the Facebook post. I wanna sidetrack Yeah. This this movie is just so goddamn pretty. Uh, oh I mean, my god! This is this was my first introduction because I didn't really pay attention when I watched Howl's Moving Castle. It's not as present. Mm-hmm. The beautiful studio Studio Ghibli food being a meme is in full force in this movie, uh, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Never watch Studio Ghibli movies hungry. Yep. You uh, will regret it because the food looks amazing all of the time. And, um, yeah, it's... Well, don't watch them while eating either, because you might just get a scene of a, uh, like, ghostly creature vomiting for five straight minutes all over everything and everyone. Uh, I... I'm not even gonna dig into, like, the magic of the movie and, like, the the logic behind the magic of the movie. I don't want to touch it. I have too much respect for this film to start asking questions like that. Like what? Like, why did the gold melt when it did? Or what, the, the when fake Yubaba? Gold. Yeah, why did it well, melt then? You because know? you also have to think Yubaba is also a sorceress, quote-unquote, so she can melt any other magic that isn't hers, or isn't if... So if the gold was real, the gold probably wouldn't have melted. Well, of course. But it was dirt, it was an illusion I, that No yeah. Face created. So do you think... When she noticed the illusion... Of her son missing? Yeah, then she just sort of snapped away all illusions as, she like, a have. precautionary. She, she probably could have done that. Uh, yeah, and that, that does make a reasonable amount of sense. It's just they don't say that, and like many Ghibli films, because they are translated, um, there's a lot of characters saying stating the obvious. Um... One particular interchange that I find particularly clunky, not that it's anyone's fault, it's just a fault of translation from Japanese to English, Mm -hmm. uh, is the discussion about Kohaku River and that being his name. They repeat Kohaku River back and forth about six times in the span of 30 seconds or so. Yeah, it 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 just happens. It just happens. If I saw somebody writing that in a coffee shop or wherever I caught myself writing it, I would go back and redo the paragraph. But... You can only change so much when you're just translating these. And I'm sure Kohaku River in uh, Japanese sounds lovely, and you can stack it right up next to one another, and it sounds just great. And it The probably movie has an option clunky. to make everything in, in Japanese. You can watch the whole movie dub. Like, you could dub the whole movie if you wanted to or sub it. Yeah, but then I'm watching subtitles. <clears throat> I'm not watching a movie. I, I so profoundly respect the people who like learn Japanese so that they can or learn any language so they can absorb the cultural output of that people Mm -hmm. better Uh, you know people learn Japanese so that they can read more manga and watch more anime and watch stuff that's that's uh, not dubbed or subbed and be able to understand it I wish I Um, learned it yeah right I I've always had aspirations to like relearn a language Actually, so, total sidebar here. Uh, my friend Rhea, who you know of, but have never met because she lives in California, um, has been doing Snapchat streaks, but with every streak, she sends, like, a, a question. Like, um, today's was, or maybe it was yesterday's, I don't check Snapchat often enough, I usually don't respond to half of them because they're two days old, was, um, what's, like, a, a talent or a skill that you want to learn but haven't yet Mm -hmm. and the thing i always come back to which is by the way a really like clever way to get interaction out of people who are you're just sending photos back and forth to of like this is what my dashboard looks like today because i got in my car and forgot to send snapchat streaks or this is what my window looks like this morning as every morning um 
this is where my pineapple cup is today. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great way to start a conversation. But my thing is always, I wish I remembered more from my Italian classes. Because I, I tried to learn Italian in middle school and high school for a solid, like, four years. I wish I didn't cheat my way through Spanish one. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, yours would actually be useful. Uh, I know, right? Seeing how I'm Puerto Rican? Well, that too. I'm just thinking if you're going to be in a, in a customer-facing position, if you're, you know, working at Family Dollar for the, for the foreseeable future... You're going to run into a lot of people who speak Spanish or broken mm -hmm. English, or didn't you have, like, the opposite problem where you were trying to talk to someone at a business and you couldn't understand them, or they couldn't understand, or sorry, yeah. Yeah, when I went to Armando's, they couldn't understand me. Yeah, that's right. I was trying to ask them if they could cut the skin off the pork shoulder for me, but I was like, they're not going to do that, so I just, <laughs> I left it. It's nice to have. It's nice to have another language yeah, under your belt. Yeah, it's nice. No matter what you're learning it for, if you're learning it because you live in a community with mixed cultures, or because you're a massive weeb, it, it it's either way impressive and very practical. Duolingo sponsor us. Duolingo, the Duolingo bird is tapping on the window like you forgot your lesson. Um, the, oh. Every episode will end with a Duolingo sponsor, but the sponsor will be. Uh, the sounds of us being beaten to death by a large green owl. All right, let's get back to the movie. Oh, yeah, we are getting right. We're way off track. Away. We're getting way off track. Um, you have the floor because I've rambled enough. I actually, I actually put on a video the other day on YouTube, and it was went through all the mythology throughout the movie Spirited Away. Like in the beginning with the houses, how the mother was like, oh, they say that little spirits live in there. And then you have the statue, you know, the with the with the, the two faced man, mm -hmm. um, that is also supposed to be like a, a a a guide into the spirit realm as well. Oh, see, I just thought it was Buddha. No, it, it, it's <laughs> uh, I forget the name, but it is. Um, hold there's on, there's like there's things in here that give you all the names, yeah, like it's... yokai and oh, it's right there. Go back up. Oh wait, no, that's sorry, that's the um, that's the that's cast. the cast list. I thought that was the mythology section. But, you know, the, the mythology and fantasy here, again, I respect it too much <clears throat> to want to question it too much. Mm -hmm. It's, although, and I'm, I'm going to make this comparison, which hopefully will be seen as favorable. Oh, wow, which they is, won a lot of awards. There's not a, oh, there's, there are three nominated, not Four. one, but that's a lot of winning. Uh, there's a stage adaptation? Anyway, um... The this is for Japanese media as Stephen King movies are for Western media uh, or American media in particular, where you just have a supernatural element that is never like explained or stated, or the consequences of it in the greater world are never really addressed. It's just that's the way it is. Like mm -hmm. um. You don't know how long they've been in the spirit world. They just yeah. sort of drive off and they get happily ever after, I well, guess. Well, they were like, um... They were... They said, oh, the car's dirty. The mother was like, What's kind of, what kind of sick joke is this? <laughs> well, the road became all overgrown. All the paint chipped off the building. Like, it strikes me... It, it's really, like... <clears throat> it doesn't want to give you a straight answer as to how long it's been. Uh, and that's unimportant, I guess. It's just, it has been, like, things have changed in the outside world compared to when they went in. Mm -hmm. Which, because we're seeing this movie through the eyes of um, Sen, whose actual name is escaping me now, uh, Shihiro. Mm -hmm. we're, because we're seeing the, the movie through the eyes of Shihiro, she has changed so much over the course that it's like her vision of the world has changed. I don't know, That's that's a way to sort of... Also, um, I wanted to talk about um, the scene where Haku was being attacked by the papers. The papers. That is actually, it's called a Shikigami, which is, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a curse, but it's also like an, an entity, like a ghost. Okay. So, I, there's a show called Death Note, I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. <laughs> um... And so there's there's the Death Note and there's a Shikigami that is attached to the Death Note. 
And if you go to uh, Duolingo.com right now and use our promo code REALIST, can you, you can learn how to write death notes in other languages. That isn't a real promo code. Don't use that. It's probably it won't it won't get you anything. I don't even know if Duolingo.com is an actual web address. <laughs> that is really neat. I just like the ow a paper cut when she gets knocked in half. Uh. Gloria is now boycotting this podcast. Because I, I make dumb jokes <laughs> while Glory's trying to say real things about movies. How about the how about the double uh, the double fake out with the slug, with the curse on the seal and the slug being, you as- which you assume is the curse on the seal, but it's not. Yeah, it's the uh, the curse that um, Yubaba put on Haku to keep him her prisoner, which seems redundant considering it is said that Haku. Yuba- what. It's said that Yubaba keeps control of people by making sure they don't know their names. Although it's a little bit wishy-washy. Maybe you just need to know your name to leave. Yeah, but um, Kamaji says that Haku showed up just like Chihiro did. Right, because he got... I think the storyline there is he got sort of forced out of the world of the living because... Of his home being taken away and made into apartments. Yes, because the river was presumably just stuffed in a pipe, which... I don't know at what point a river spirit stops being a river. What the hell was that? I don't know. Did you just breathe heavily in the direction of the microphone? Could have been. I don't I don't know. <laughs> that waveform looked very bad. I apologize to the... Uh, to the viewers. Yep. Yeah, to the listeners, to the viewers. If um, you're here, you're staring at a at a probably very beautiful looking uh, backdrop. How about the, the flowers? The, the flowers where they're running through? The twisty flower passage is weird. It made me feel weird things. I don't know... What do you it, mean? it made me. It made me feel like one of those like you never get out of here hallways, uh, where you just keep going and going and going and going because of the way it perfectly because it's always like curving away from you. You can't see more than a couple of feet in it. Mm-hmm. I. I thought it was really beautiful. I mean, I, it is really beautiful. But sorry, you're saying. Look, there's another one. Yeah. So, oh, I missed. Um, that's okay. I. I'm gl- I regretted trying to blow on the microphone because now you're j- we're just like making the life for wor- making life worse for the audience to prove to prove a point. Uh, point is, don't breathe in the general direction of the microphone. Just speak towards it. Um, but yeah, it was really beautiful seeing like everything, like seeing the intricate details that they put into every flower, every petal. Mm-hmm. You know, every detail of the house. You know, the 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 way that the water is, the way that the train works, you know, the the bathhouse, how it functions, everything was just right. Mm-hmm. And, um, Except for that one extra pipe that Chihiro knocks down that doesn't seem to serve any purpose. Because they never worry about it being destroyed. It's a life-saving pipe. It's a That's li- what it it is. saved one life. It is, That's in fact, what a life-saving is. pipe. It is a life-saving pipe. Also, what about that step she broke on the way down? We don't see her deal with that on the way back up. You're right, we don't. Um, I, I always thought, even... On the first viewing and on the second viewing, on this viewing, where we get to that scene, I went like, oh, she's going to have to deal with that step. Oh, wait, never mind. They just time skipped <laughs> past it. Like, oh, about, okay, I guess you just, like, the, jumped over how it. How about the soot sprites going on strike when they first The soot Chihiro. sprites are my favorite characters, okay? The, sh- the soot sprites going on strike was for as soon as they meet Shihiro. <laughs> They're sprite. like, she did our job. We're going to strike now. Soot sprite unionize. <laughs> uh, one big union of soot sprites. The, uh, oh god damn it! Now I'm thinking about sud sprites. I wanted to, I wanted to bring up something. Either way, the, oh yeah, sort of the mechanics of the building are very neat to me. The there's a train in this movie. There was a train in Howl's Moving Castle. I wonder what is the most train heavy, uh, Miyazaki film. Because I would, I would go and watch that. Um, I feel like every. Following a singular example, I, I believe that every director should have their quintessential train film, and that singular example I can think of is Wes Anderson with uh, the Darjeeling Limited. He has his train film. Um, so we need our Miyazaki train film, is, what I, <laughs> is all I'm saying. Um, but, um, you know, so Chihiro goes on this adventure, you know, basically it's a... 
would you could you say that this movie is a coming of age absolutely. film? Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't get to see how uh, the coming of age of Chihiro affects her life outside of the spirit world, really. Uh, if we're running with my sort of symbolism, her, like, the outside world has changed, and therefore, like, she has changed because she's perceiving it differently. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't get to see, like, yeah, how that affects her in the yeah, end. Yeah, we don't get to see how it affects her in the real world, but we can definitely see, you know, when she comes back from Zaniba's and she's with Haku and and Bo, and the Raven, whatever you want to call it, and... Mini, mini, uh... Mini, mini Baba. Um, and she... Your mama, you Baba. <laughs> can I, can I finish now? Yes. Can I, can I finish now? Are you yes. done? Are you done? Sorry, you got me thinking about other names for the little Raven, Raven thing, Dabby Duck. Mini Duck. Stop. <laughs> Can we, um, let me finish my point and then we gotta jump into star ratings, okay? No. But you can definitely see... Turn them into bacon! <laughs> <laughs> you can see towards the end that she definitely grows up because Haku was like, remember what your parents look like or, you know, they'll be eaten or something like that. Well, they'll be turned into bacon, clearly. <clears throat> And so she's like, none of these are my parents. And she was like, are you sure? And she was like, yeah, none of these are my parents. And so her contract gets destroyed and she gets to go home. But Haku tells her not to look look back until she's through the tunnel. Mm -hmm. I wonder what would have happened if she looked back. She probably would have been stuck in the, that, the spirit world, maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. It, it never makes it clear what's going to happen. I, the one thing that drives me nuts about this movie, actually... The one thing that, that befuddles and frustrates me is that, was there something that we were supposed to be looking for with the pigs? Like, a sign that they were not her parents? Because her parents' pigs were not were not uniquely identifiable, not in any way that I could tell. Uh, I didn't recognize anything. And, yeah, you're shaking your head, so you didn't recognize anything. Maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Um... Uh, yeah, it just says, after she answers correctly, none of the pigs are her parents. So, what, how did she know? Like, it's not clear how she knew. I mean, maybe she, maybe the, the hair elastic that Zaniba gave her was a way of telling, it was a way of helping her, you know, like, as her guide. Maybe, but I think it's going to help her in her life going forward, which is why we get the little... <laughs> Flash the little, of it the little glimmer the at the end. Yeah. All right. Which um, I like. Um, we're gonna do star rating. Well, we have our we, previous yeah, star ratings. Yeah, because we we watched this movie before and we did our previous star ratings. You gave it a four and I gave it a five. I'm gonna ask you: Are you gonna change your five? Hell no. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Not <laughs> no, not for a second. Not I am gonna change my four though. Watching this this movie is my childhood, like. A majority of these movies that we are watching are either from my childhood or from your childhood or, yep. you know, movies we've just experienced and we want to show each other. But mm -hmm. this movie is literally from my childhood. Like, I would watch this movie 24-7. You know, I watched this movie with my sister growing up. Did you wear the tape out? Uh, actually, no, I had this on DVD. Oh, okay. Well, lucky you. You didn't have to worry about that. Um, And so, you know, I mean, it's... What a what an amazing film! What a masterpiece! You know the art is outrageous. The storyline is fantastic. You know, and you always you always have a hero in a Miyazaki film. Like you always have that one person that stands out above the others. Mm -hmm. We well, have your protagonist, and your protagonist is generally just a you know a good person. What's really interesting is that Haku, as I guess. I don't remember the exact name for it. I want to say Deuteragonist, but I don't know if that's correct. We never get a clear answer as to whether Haku is a good person or not. Everyone... Yeah, because Lin's like, oh, he works for Yubaba, you can't trust him. Yep. Or, um, and we don't know if she's saying that because of anything he's done or anything he's said or just I because just, he works for Yubaba. I think it's just because he works for Yubaba, honestly. That's a reasonable conclusion, but... Other people sort of back the idea up that Haku... I mean, he did save Chihiro's life all those years ago. 
He did. He could have let her drown. I mean... He did. And I'm not saying that he's bad. Mm -hmm. I am saying that he's a character that is gray, perhaps. That is possibly gray in a way we don't usually see. Which is that they have done, allegedly anyway, unequivocally good things and unequivocally bad things. And not just like good things for bad reasons or bad things for good reasons. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, ends justifies the means sort of, sort of stuff. He's doing genuinely good things for genuinely good reasons. But also, he's, he stole the seal, which, you know, again, he was uh, Yubaba's puppet at the time, but he stole the seal. He allegedly got in under Yubaba so that he could steal her magic. Um, but, know. I mean, he also did help Shahiro, uh, you know, with feeding her food from the land. He also, you know, told her to go to Kamaji to get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, she... He did a lot of things, you know, yeah, brought her to things. her parents, gave her her clothes. Also, Kamaji randomly stuck his neck out for her. That was kind of crazy. For real. That's like, one of the he, weird things. He, She's my granddaughter. She's yeah. your what? <laughs> yeah. We don't even know if this man can have kids. He's a spider. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, but, you know, what else has he got eight of? Anyway, no, the... the the thing I was trying to say is it's really interesting to see this movie sort of address a very real life um, sort of situation that isn't usually addressed in movies, which is that spider people have kids. No, it's that a person can be seen completely differently by different people. Mm -hmm. And those people will then interact and say like, oh, I like this person. This person and, means or, what they say. Yeah. Or, yeah, I like this person. You don't like this person. We both are being completely truthful. Like, I don't think that Yubaba, or I don't think that uh, Lynn was her name? Lynn, yeah. I don't think Lynn and, what was Yubaba's? Zaniba. Lynn and Zaniba, I don't think they are knowingly lying about Haku or his nature. They probably truly believe the things they are saying about Haku. They may not have the full picture. But the point is, they have very, like, between them and Chihiro, they have vastly different opinions of Haku and vastly different experiences with him. Actually, uh, before we before we end the, the podcast, um, I was... He's just interesting as a character. Yeah, Go sorry. Ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, I watched, I was watching another theory video. Oh, no. And there's a theory that Yubaba is actually Zaniba, but in a different light. Because Zaniba takes, Yubaba takes off during the day. What is she doing? Y yeah, but no, they wouldn't be messing with each other like that. Come on, she's not gonna, she's not gonna transform the baby and then not know about the transformation of the baby. I, I, that's a really interesting, like, alter ego shtick, and I, I see the... Multiple personalities? Yeah, I, I see it, but I don't see it. Like, there's not enough basis in the movie for it, I feel like. Um, anyway, unless there's something that I don't understand, uh... You said you were gonna change your answer. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am going to lower it. Just kidding. I'm... Upping it to uh, 4.5. Really? No, it's going to 5. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, like I said, I have a much greater respect for this movie after watching all those other movies. Mm -hmm. um, because it packs so much into a movie, but the pacing doesn't feel rushed. I don't feel... I mean, I do sometimes feel confused, but that's more of a suspension of disbelief sort of thing because there's so much going on. Uh, because it's such a weird sort of liminal reality mm -hmm. that Chihiro ends up in. And less of, like, they're not explaining stuff completely. No. The stuff they don't explain doesn't need to be explained. It just is the way it is. I, I wonder if um, Chihiro remembers anything. Like, I wonder once she passed through the tunnel to the mortal realm, per se, if she remembers anything. I would <clears throat> think so. We don't get any indication of it. But I would think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's got the band with her to remind her. And what is it that you, Baba, said? Uh, or Zaniba said? 
you know, once you meet somebody, your memories of memories of them never really go away. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it sort of indicates the power of memory, and of course, this movie features the power of love by Huey Lewis in the news about breaking uh, about breaking, breaking that curse. Spell. Yeah, powerful curses slash spells, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, which is funny because that's um, I was reading about. Uh, Steven Universe aside, I was reading about Garnet's future vision and why it's not always reliable, and it's like that love can cloud induce, her judgment. Yeah, love can cloud her judgment and induce chaos. Like, love is the only or most immeasurable you thing mean, in the universe. Like, you mean when Sapphire and Ruby both tell Steven to propose to Connie when you know damn well <laughs> yeah. that they are not ready for marriage? Spoilers, jeez. Uh, oh, shush. This was this week's this week was either going to be Spirited Away or the Steven Universe movie, just yeah. to peel back that curtain. I think I'm going to wait until I finish Season 5 of Steven Universe, and then we'll watch the movie. You finished Steven f Season 5 of Steven Universe for the what time? I don't like being called out like this, you know? <laughs> I don't appreciate it, man. Oh, we're man. also going over. We're, like we're way over, but it's like okay, six... because we only spent a third of this episode talking about the movie. <laughs> uh... <laughs> We're like we six talked about, minutes over. We talked about waveforms, Snapchat, and uh, Duolingo. So, I don't know Snapchat. what the hell... When did we talk about Snapchat? The snaps of get... The, the things, the provocative questions that made me oh, transition oh, to get talking oh. about learning Italian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Let me take a picture of my wall and send it out <clears> with a big red S on it so that people know it's streaks and not a accidental photo. Um, okay. Well, what am I? What, what is am, your choice? What is my choice? I have no freaking clue. I have movies that I've taken out of the movie rack and just scattered around the house because we were going to watch <laughs> them and then we didn't watch them. And we also gained else a movie. My dad let us keep a Bronx Tale. Yeah, so. we we have increased again. Um, oh, let's see. Okay, hold on. Um. Hamilton is, is going to be a Christmas special episode. That's right. That's on that the twenty fourth. That will be our fiftieth, and that will be our fiftieth episode. Right. This is the forty sixth. Yes. Forty seventh, forty eighth, forty ninth. Yeah, fiftieth is that's going to be Christmas. So, because I was going to say we should watch Die Hard if if we weren't doing Hamilton on Christmas. Um, we could watch ha we could watch Die Hard before. We can, but that'll be the seventeenth. So I still need to. Pick well, that one for will next also week. be the Christmas party, so we might not be able to get to watch a movie. Oh, we should watch a movie with everyone, and have them review one by one. Yeah, get everyone in this room together and get just everybody do a drunk group as review. hell. <laughs> get everyone drunk as hell and review a Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I have no idea. We'll figure it out. Uh, it's probably going to be. I mean, we do need to do Princess Bride still. Yeah, I'd still like to do that. So, maybe that, maybe uh, maybe something else. Something else we need to do around Christmas. We kind of have our three Christmas movies sorted out then. If we do, like, Die Hard on this, on this weekend with the 17th, and then Hamilton, and then we have to, have to, have to watch It's a Wonderful Life. And you have to stay awake for it this time. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. But that's, that's mandatory. But I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll do something. I think for Valentine's Day, we're going to watch Me Before You, because... Me Before You? Yeah, okay. It's a really nice romantic movie. Or My Cousin... We can watch... We can do My Cousin Vinny next. Because we, we had a little bit of Joe Pesci. I was going to do more Joe Pesci. Yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We're almost to 100 subscribers. We're actually over. We're, we're over. Oh, we, we, made are? It, we made it to 101 Never mind. or something. Forget that. I need to go fix the custom URL and everything, but I'll do that on a day I have free, which I don't have those anymore. So... Uh, anyway, thank you all for watching this extra long episode. This was not intended to be this long, but considering... If you've seen this movie, leave a comment, and if you haven't, I definitely recommend you watching this movie. It's on HBO Max if you have that. Mm -hmm. And if you see a no-face, don't let him into the bathhouse. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.